So we're now going to be um, moving over to uh, to Mike West. Now, uh, Mike, I know that this is a little bit premature for your expectations on presenting today, but uh, uh, are you with us? Unmute me. There you go. There, you there we go. Yes. Hi, Mike. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks. Great. Well, I, yeah, and it's great. It's a pleasure to have you on board. And of course, Mike, you know, you're going to be supporting us uh, in, in other sessions about uh, your, your work, uh, obviously, as a publicly quoted company. But uh, we've got your slides here and uh, we can either run them from uh, from your end uh, or we can run them for you for here. So which would you which you would you prefer us to do? Uh, if I can just use the up and down arrow, that's fine with me. OK, right. We'll hand over to you. I'll drop out and uh, see you on the other side. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so um, let's see if my slides are working here. So if I can use my up and down arrow, or maybe you can do it for me. Um, if we go to the first line. Yeah, it's slowly coming there. So um, uh, my name is Michael West. I'm with uh, Ajax Therapeutics. We're a public company. Uh, we're primarily in the regenerative medicine space uh, in aging, of course. And uh, but today I'm going to talk about just one uh, one of the uh, things we're doing at Ajax uh, in a short talk. I, I don't have time to cover everything, and it's the um, what has been referred to in just the last hour as um, epigenetic reprogramming of aging. Some people call it partial reprogramming. We call it induced tissue regeneration. I think it's all the same thing. In doing so, I'll be making forward-looking statements. Uh, if you can forward to the next slide, please. I need to show our, our viewers the uh, forward-looking statements. We're a public company. If any of you have uh, interest in the company, please see our filings with the SEC because I'll be making forward-looking statements here. Uh, next slide, please. So the um, what I'm going to be talking today about is um, a near I mentioned uh, an important concept um, about the, how e every generation life is reprogrammed when the sperm and egg uh, are made. The clock of aging is reset and babies are always born young. Uh, so this is really profound <laughs> because what it's saying is, is that nature is provided and utilizes a fundamental mechanism to reset the clock of aging. Well, let me repeat that. I sound like a TV preacher or something. I want to emphasize this point. Nature is showing us that there's a molecular mechanism of resetting the clock and aging in human cells. Years ago, August Weissman was an early uh, scientist that uh, under, began to understand the cellular basis of life. And he divided cells in, in multicellular animals like humans into two different types, the germline uh, and the soma. We are the soma, the body, all the cells in the body. But these reproductive lineage of cells keep making babies that are born young. What are the fundamental differences between the two? And you do the next slide, please. So uh, Weissman uh, has this famous quote, way back in the 1800s, uh, he predicted that death takes place because a worn out tissue cannot forever renew itself and because of the capacity by means of cell division is not everlasting, but finite. And he was referring to cells in the body as opposed to the germline. And so, yeah, thank you. So um, where this is today, so, you know, go <laughs> advancing 150 years or so, using modern molecular uh, technologies, we've been dissecting the, this transition from the immortal germline, which is this red arrow, arrow here that replicates indefinitely and makes babies forever. Uh, the somatic cells that are really kind of important to you and I, the somatic cells, our bodies, uh, undergo the shift into mortality. They're programmed to age and die. Uh, throughout the body, it's a nearly universal mechanism in many different tissues in the body. And that's an important point because we want to affect multiple different tissues in the body. Uh, Aubrey showed all these different manifestations of aging in different tissues. Well, what they have in common, we believe, uh, whether it's kidney or you know, intestine or lung or whatever, uh, is that somatic cells undergo a, a 
series of steps. We call it somatic restriction, um, the series of developmental steps. The first one is the pluripotent, we call it the pluripotency transition, where cells turn off telomerase, which is this immortalizing enzyme that allows cells to replicate indefinitely. And this causes what Weissman referred to as the, the finite lifespan of the somatic cell and cell senescence. And then as we've heard, you know, okay, so let's get rid of those cells because they actually have a damaging effect on tissue and cause pathology. I'm just going to talk about one other step here quickly. And that's uh, what we're interested in probably the most is the embryonic fetal transition. Once development is complete, a profound capacity of the tissues in our body to repair themselves and naturally regenerate and naturally undergo senolysis, that's an important point, uh, is turned off. So at eight weeks after the egg is fertilized by sperm, our bodies formed, we transition into what's called fetal development and a fundamental change occurs. Next slide, please. And so, um, the, uh, to put this in the context of the Weissman thing, on the left you see these transitions. Uh, animals, this is recapitulating, we're recapitulating evolution here in our development. Primitive organisms like these little planaria flatworms, you cut their head off, it just grows back. They have telomerase, so they're immortal under the edge of the knife, they can regenerate forever, and they don't age. Uh, a lot of these primitive animals don't. We don't think humans do either in the very early uh, steps of our development, but once we transition into, for instance, the fetal development, we've lost now the ability to regenerate a tissue. So we scar over like a heart attack instead of regenerating it and so on. Uh, this is the Weissman barrier. The question is, is can we break the barrier? Next slide, please. So um, we can, uh, that's, I guess, the profound aspect of uh, what began with cloning. So cloning, that Dolly the sheep cloning, is the reprogramming of development where a cell from the body is taken back to the beginning of life to make a new uh, animal. We showed back in the year 2000 that that reset the telomere clock of aging. Uh, here is some data that um, transcriptional reprogramming using just defined uh, transcription factors primarily can reprogram a telomere length, reset cell lifespan, we're showing you in the middle. And then uh, Steve Horvath on the right showed that even the uh, uh, methylation clock is reset in what are called IPS cells. You can see there in that diagram on the right. Next slide, please. So we have means of taking cells, and transporting them all the way back to the beginning of life. Cloning is what that is. Dolly was actually born young, despite what you may have heard. And uh, we can now do this in the dish, make young cells, make the cells that you were born from, young heart, muscle, whatever, uh, identical to you in the dish. It's really amazing. Um, what about doing it in the body? Could we use this really remarkable thing of reprogramming to advance developmental clock backward in time or forward in time. Uh, and that's this, what we call, rather than induced pluripotency, induced tissue regeneration. So this is, this is the, uh, what's commonly called the epigenetic landscape. So here are the transitions on the left. I'm we're putting this in the form that was originally um, uh, published, the epigenetic landscape. And then on the right, you can see IPS repair. I mean, taking cells back to pluripotency is one thing, is it possible to take uh, the arrow time back in the body, not just in the dish, uh, back to this, uh, in, to an immortal and or, or regenerative state? We call that induced tissue regeneration. Next slide. So, um, so on the left is now classic, uh, you know, regenerative medicine where you take cells either from an embryo, embryonic stem cells, or you take cells from a patient and take them back in time uh, to make young cells to put back in the body. That's classical cell therapy, uh, regenerative therapies. But is it possible to apply reprogramming in vivo? And that's not IPS, that's ITR. Next slide, please. 
Well, we've been working hard on this uh, actually for quite a, well, all the way back the cloning days. And um, uh, yeah, trying to collapse all this into a couple of minutes. On the top is a marker of a gene that turns on at the embryonic fetal transition. It's involved in mitochondrial function, dramatically changes mitochondrial function. It goes up with age. And um, here I'm just showing a bunch of early embryonic cells on the left and then uh, adult cells on the right. And on the far right, you can see uh, aged ITR. So here are aged uh, skin cells that were uh, using a cocktail of factors that we've developed were taken <laughs> back in time, approximating uh, the time that we believe that a regenerative state would be induced. On the bottom is a gene that has the opposite pattern. Uh, these are, these, I put these genes on here because both of these are involved in a shift uh, in metabolism that occurs, the you know, Warburg phenomenon effect. And uh, the bottom gene is involved in the glycolytic status of the embryonic cell, and you can see uh, the induction of that by our ITR uh, cocktail. Next slide, please. So um, what we're working on, of course, is a way of a method of delivering this technology in the body. Uh, at AJEX, we're exploring all three possible approaches to this, gene therapy approaches, small molecule therapeutic approaches, and the one I'm showing you here, which is my favorite, which is to uh, package up these uh, fact reprogramming factors into exosomes. Um, Dana LaRocca and our group uh, at AJEX has been working very hard on exosome technology as a means of delivering these factors uh, for in vivo applications. Next slide. So uh, there's also, uh, just quickly mention, you know, what I've been describing is reversing aging, reversing reverse programming, you might call it. Uh, but it's also possible to uh, a forward program to take a immature cell and make it more mature. Why would you want to do that? In the next slide, it shows you why. Uh, when you make cells from, say, embryonic stem cells uh, in the laboratory dish, they tend not to uh, traverse the embryonic fetal transition, not to mature. Uh, as I mentioned, this COX7A1 gene is shown you here uh, with its, by the way, its age effect. See how it's accumulating with age until you reach maturity. Uh, but on the right, uh, our heart muscle cells, uh, are, as are being used now by industry for drug screening, cardiotox screening, are made from iPS cells. And you can see there's, they're not adult. They're not even fetal. They're embryonic, embryonic heart muscle. So uh, this gene is really important in the normal function of adult heart muscle cells. And we're developing a product in collaboration with GE Healthcare to um, make these cells for drug screening is a near-term commercial opportunity uh, to make money. Next slide. Uh, GE Healthcare has shown uh, that many drugs that ended up being cardiotoxic that weren't picked up in animal models. And so having human and normal adult human cells, something that people have not been able to achieve uh, without this understanding of how to control the aging clock. Um, it's called billion dollar uh, failures of drugs, some of which are shown here. And uh, in collaboration, as I mentioned, with GE Healthcare, uh, now called Cytiva, uh, we are uh, developing a fully adult human heart muscle for this market. We consider it to be a considerable a market near-term opportunity for the company. Next slide, please. So uh, one, other, I just mentioned for all of those of you interested in biology and, and the big picture of things, here is this gene I mentioned earlier that's uh, involved in the um, Warburg effect, the glycolytic status of embryonic cells. On the little diagram on the light, right on the left, you see gene expression of the, in embryonic cells, a few different adult cells like fetal brown fat and hepatocytes. Otherwise, it's not expressed in the adult. And then on the right, cancer cells. On the right of this diagram, and maybe a lot of you wouldn't understand what this is, this is um, the methylation status of the DNA. And uh, uh, the rows here are embryonic adult and then cancer corresponding to that cell type, embryonic adult cancer, you can see that the cancers look embryonic. What we've uncovered by understanding aging is, is that cancer uh, re reverts 
and most cancers revert to a very embryonic uh, pattern of gene expression. And uh, we plan to um, utilize some of our technology for applications uh, in cancer as well. So the next slide is my little summary slide, I think. We can bring that one up. Um, so, yeah, so the, I don't think there's many, um, many uh, uh, developments in the aging field that have potentially is um, broad uh, applications in aging and cancer and a lot of different diseases, including, you know, even with young people, the need to scarlessly regenerate um, tissues as um, the induction of regeneration could be and or the induction of immortal tissue regeneration by implementing telomerase into the uh, formula. And so uh, what we call ITR uh, is what we've just discussed and it's the induction of regeneration and aging markers in vivo for age-related degenerative diseases, reverse programming for aging and, and those diseases, forward programming for uh, cancer therapy and these uh, uh, applications in uh, drug screening and so on. So with that, um, I'll finish my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mike. That that's fascinating. And of course, you know, as a as a company that's very active, I noticed that you've done quite a lot of um, licensings with universities recently. And uh, there was the announcement by the FDA about the clearance for the instem drug, uh, IMS. S I M S 001, which uh, I guess that must be quite interesting that your technology is now starting to see its way into FDA approval and commercialization. Yeah, so the the um, the uh, embryonic stem cell, uh, as opposed to the iPS cell, is uh, increasingly of interest. There, there's some issues relating to iPS cells in regard to their um, their normality, and so the clinical grade um, master cell banks of human uh, embryonic stem cells, which are, uh, there's an increasing number of commercial entities interested in making everything from CAR T, many of your viewers may have heard of, you know, means of engine, engineering uh, immune cells to attack cancer and other, even uh, the coronavirus. And, um, and of course, cellular regenerative therapies. Um, so, you know, it, historically, the pharmaceutical industry has been interested in small molecule drugs, off the shelf small molecules. Uh, cell therapy has been um, kind of slow to get adopted, but CAR T had such an explosive impact on the industry uh, with some you know billion billion dollar acquisitions of companies. Uh, now cell therapy is really coming of age, and um, of course our interest is primarily in. Uh, as Aubrey always talks about, you know, keeping the antique car on the road by replacing uh, components with young parts. And that's the whole concept of regenerative medicine is either putting young cells into the body to repair the body or inducing what I talked about today, the intrinsic ability of the body to repair itself, even in, in an immortal fashion. Uh, it's great work, Mike, and uh, best of luck to you and your colleagues, obviously, as, uh, as you keep up with your, with your great work. And hopefully you'll be able to join us for the Ask Me Anything session at the end of the, uh, the event today. Thanks. Great. Thanks very much, Mike.